In this video, the ROG Flow Z13 versus the ProArt PX13. And there's been a lot of questions on which one is the best offering, and most specifically, people are wondering if the new AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus is really worth the coin versus the more affordable PX13. And I think you'll be surprised at how competitive the PX13 still is, even with the release of the new Z13 and that new processor. Now, we're gonna to get to the performance and all of the different details regarding pen support, usability, uh, but first we're gonna dive into just like the form factor, the build quality, some of the specs and the ports, so you can get really a full brief on the value of each of these devices. Now, first and foremost, obviously in my opinion, I would lean towards the PX13 because of the form factor. I like the more classic laptop. Uh, it just fits more of my lifestyle. I'm on the go. I don't really benefit from a tablet form factor as much. Um, I like the rigidity of a clamshell laptop that I can just kind of carry around move around with me um, if I go to pick up this laptop then this thing's kind of hanging off I just don't prefer this form factor as much so that's probably the biggest reason I would lean towards a PX 13 is just a mere form factor preference uh, and you'll see that when I get later into the benchmarks that uh, by doing that, you're not really missing out on too much performance. And in fact, in some ways, the PX13 actually does have an added benefit. Now, a big thing that people look at uh, in considering these two is, of course, pen compatibility. Now, they both are pen compatible. Um, they both have very similar pen compatibility as far as the stroke. Very nice. It trails off very nicely. Um, there's a little bit of palm sensitivity, so the palm rejection is not perfect. Uh, you do have a bit of that palm touch if you end up like, picking up and resting your hand. Uh, I threw some B-roll up there so you can see that. So the palm rejection is not perfect, um, but it, it is good. So pen compatibility is easy uh, for both of them. Now, obviously the big difference is on this device, the PX13, you can go ahead into you know a tablet mode that way. And to do tablet mode for this device, you pull off the uh, cover and then you know there you go. It, it looks good to go. Uh, now, one thing that I know people, a lot of people have asked about, they're like, okay, once you unplug the keyboard, can you still use the keyboard? No, uh, keyboard does not work once you're unplugged. So that kind of kills the whole vibe of like, okay, let's say I want to, you know, set up my device like this. I want to have my shortcuts over here and my pen over here. That won't really work, you know, because sometimes you want like more of a creative setup. And so that really won't work. If you want to use the keyboard and the pen together, you'll just have to have it in that, in that regard. So you can't, you know, let's say set this in your lap have more of a comfortable setup and then have like your keyboard up here. Like that'd be kind of a really cool setup. Actually, you can't even see that um, because the camera doesn't show you. But let's just say I wanna set this over here. Well, now I'm really getting, I'm trying to like really make this work. All right, let's angle this up using this computer. Okay, let's just say I wanna do like kind of more like this style, you know, where I have my shortcuts here. That won't work. Um, so this must be connected for it to function as a keyboard. So just keep that in mind. Now that we're connected again, you can see that you can type no problem. Um, so that's really the big the big difference there. Even though the keyboard disconnects, it doesn't provide you with flexibility of like where you can set the keyboard. So it really isn't that big of an advantage um, because when you go ahead and you fold over a two-in-one tablet, okay, now you've lost the keyboard usage. Well, that kind of is the same thing um, over here. So you'd have to actually buy like a separate Bluetooth keyboard which is the same for this device if you wanted to have any sort of flexibility. Kind of long-winded, but I know that, that different workflows and different kind of ergonomic setups really matter to people, so I didn't want to disregard uh, how it functioned. Uh, now, the big, also a big point is the Asus dial. Personally, for me, I do not see the dial on the trackpad being a big win, a big selling point. Uh, it's just kind of moderately useful or minimally useful. I think if they had the dial as a separate full physical dial, like in 2022 and 2023, then it does make a really nice added feature. With it being integrated on the trackpad, it just kind of seems like it's fitting, trying to fit too much into one little area. Both the trackpads are very nice. They're both very quiet um, and they're nearly, if not um, identical size. Yeah, yeah, they're the exact same size. So that's a really nice uh, feature as well. Now, I'm gonna give you a sample of me using both keyboards and trackpads so you can hear what they sound like for yourself. They're very close. Now, in regards to this being a thin keyboard, 
uh, it's it's like the same key press. It's a fantastic key press. So you're not losing out on you know the laptop quality by getting this thin cover uh, with the keyboard integrated. It's very, very nice. Now, I know a big complaint for a lot of people with the ProArt series was the lower refresh rate. So we have a 60 hertz refresh rate, 3K display versus a 2.5K display at a 180 hertz refresh rate. So that might be a big selling point for a lot of you looking for a higher refresh rate. They both have solid brightness and really solid color accuracy and color gamut range. So if you're looking for a higher refresh rate, then hands down, you should choose the Z13. However, as mentioned, it's going to be hundreds of dollars more to go for the Z13. So that's a pretty big decision. Uh, now, the next thing I want to go ahead and dive into is, of course, the form factor and thickness. You can see with the cover, they are almost identical in thickness. Um, so as far as the travel compatibility, uh, they're both very nice on the go friendly packages. Now the weight is very similar as well. They're almost the same weight. Now looking at the port connectivity, you can see that they both charge via the new square charger. They both have HDMI, USB-C, micro SD card reader, which the micro SD card reader on the PX13 is on the other side. Uh, so they both have all the same port connectivity, which is pretty cool. So we have one USB-A, two USB-Cs on each of the devices, and of course a micro SD card reader, the HDMI, and the headphone jack. So exact same port connectivity, whether you choose the PZ13 or the PX13. So that kind of helps mitigate some of that decision making. Now they do have webcams, of course, on the top bezel. Here's a sample of the webcams so you can see for yourself. This is the webcam on the ASUS ProArt PX13 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. This is a sample of the webcam on the ROG Flow Z13 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability, I'll put links in the description below. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. So I'm so, so incredibly grateful when y'all just take the little moment to go down, click that link and uh, help me out. Keep the channel going. It means so much to me. Okay, let's talk about speakers. Here is an audio sample of each of the speakers so you can hear for yourself what those sound like in case that is of utmost importance to you. I know is gonna be a big deciding factor is battery life. Now in regards to like streaming video playback and productivity, the Z13 will do better on battery life. It just is a bit more efficient for those low power tasks. However, if you're thinking about like real world usage of Photoshop or video editing, you're actually going to benefit uh, no different from choosing either of these laptops. They're going to get nearly the same battery life while doing heavy 4K or 6K video editing or Photoshop work. So if that's where you're considering the battery life, then either of these will work well. But if you're somebody who sees themselves doing a lot more productivity, business, streaming video, then the Z13 will be more power efficient because you don't have to worry as much about that dedicated GPU draining some of your power. Now for your upgrade path, they both have access to M.2 slots. However, the RAM is not upgradable. If you want to access the M.2 slot, on the PX13, you have to take off the entire bottom cover. If you want to access the M.2 slot on the Z13, you just take off this little panel, you got quick access to it. So it's actually nice, a little bit easier to upgrade the M.2 on the Z13 as compared to the PX13. They are both upgradable in the same manner. If you're looking for a quieter device, I would recommend the Z13. It is going to be slightly quieter on performance mode. Uh, it's going to be a very nice, 37 to 41 decibels on the silent mode on battery power. If you're looking for slightly better fan noise, I would consider the Z13. You're gonna have about four to five decibels quieter 
on the Z13S compared to the PX13. The PX13 got a little bit louder. Now, both laptops do well on silent mode. They're around the 37 to 41 decibels of fan noise on silent mode. But on performance mode, the Z13 is a little bit quieter. Now, they both have about 75 to 81 degrees Celsius for the 4K export for the thermals on the chipset. So very even matchup. Uh, we have really good ventilation on the Z13 coming out of the top here. And of course the ventilation on the PX13 is off the sides here. Both managed very well, no concerns there. All right, now let's get into the real world benchmarks. For the simulated benchmarks, the Z13 definitely shows off. That newer chipset is showing more performance capabilities. However, shifting into real world benchmarks, we also see an improvement for the Z13. Now they're both 32 gigs of RAM. Forgive me for not mentioning the setup earlier. We have the AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 with 32 gigs of RAM. And of course that Strix Halo, that AMD Radeon 8060S. For the PX13, we have the AMD Ryzen AI 9 HX370 with the NVIDIA RTX 4060 and 32 gigs of RAM. So looking inside of Photoshop, it is a much better performer for the Z13. We're seeing roughly 2000 points more for the Z13. Now also looking at AI denoise, we are seeing slightly better times out of AI denoise, a few seconds faster for that feature. So something to keep in mind. So a little bit better Photoshop performance. And this is the 32 gig RAM version. They make a 64 gig of RAM and they make a 128 gigs of RAM. Now, one feature that's going to be available to you that's not available on the PX13, because of the new integrated GPU that's so powerful, you can actually share RAM allocation between the CPU and the GPU or like the system and the GPU. And so that allows you to really flex and get creative, especially if you have 64 or 128 gigs of RAM. Personally, if I were gonna buy the Z13, I would get the 64 gig of RAM version if my budget allowed. And that would provide me a lot of flexibility to do a lot of RAM allocation. You, know, you can consider this kind of the VRAM allocation towards that GPU since I had so much available by getting 64 or 128 gigs of RAM. Um, and you can see I've put up B-roll, so you can see it's very easy to do that in the system. You just go into the Armory Crate Center, swap it over, and you're good to go. So that is a very large benefit to the Z13 as compared to the PX13. I'm just fingers crossed that they launch a pro art with this CPU. I don't know if they will. The CPU seems to be reserved for only a couple models this year, but that might change with some announcements. And I hear little birdie tells me that April 7th is a day for a lot of pro art announcements. That is a rumor. Don't know if it's gonna come true, but that is a rumor. So perhaps we'll see what 50 series are gonna happen. We're gonna see some different things. So fingers crossed that we get more information around that date. I'm excited to find out personally. For Autodesk 3ds Max, Autodesk Maya and PTC Creo, we're seeing pretty even results. However, Radeon, very famous for being a top performer inside of SolidWorks, holds the crown in SolidWorks by a long shot. So if you're somebody considering working in SolidWorks and you're considering a PX13 versus a Z13, it's not even a question, I'd go Z13 all the way. And I would definitely get 64 plus gigs of RAM to really optimize the system to its fullest capabilities. For 4K video editing export, we have two minutes and 25 seconds versus the Asus ProArt PX13 at two minutes and 46 seconds. So definitely gonna see a little bit better performance out of the Z13 as compared to the PX13. So that integrated Radeon 8060S is showing better performance as far as the export time as compared to the RTX 4060. For 6K video editing export, 6K to 6K, 14 minutes and three seconds versus 18 minutes and 42 seconds. So a whole four minutes faster on the export time out of the Z13. But if you're looking for smoother playback, eight drop frames for 6K B-RAW versus the 265 frames from the Z13. Now, both of those will pretty much go unnoticed, the drop frames that is. And so really either one will work well. And I've done full video editing benchmarking of these two devices. So I've run different codecs, different frame rates, all of those within a live stream. So if you wanna see video editing capabilities on like a whole different level, of all these different codecs, 
definitely check out that video. It's a live stream on my channel. Head on over there, check it out. I've done it for both the PX13 and the Z13. Highly recommend checking those out if you're seriously considering one of these devices for video editing. If you're considering either of these devices for your creative work, you can see that they are both solid machines. Now, I think that you are gonna have an added benefit by choosing the Z13 in regards to performance. However, in some cases, it's $1,000 more, if say you're considering the 64 or 128 gig version versus something like the RTX 4050 version, right? So you kind of have to compare the apples to apples. This video, we're mainly looking at the RTX 4060 version with 32 gigs of RAM versus the 32 gig RAM version. So that's really the price point you ought to be considering. And again, there are links in the description below if you wanna check the live pricing or make a purchase. Remember, click or tap the screen here for more videos to help you with your buying decision. And I'll see you in the next one.